Thank you, Nirad. Good morning, everyone. Um, and as Nirad said, welcome to this third edition of the Tech Hub Island Summit Conference. It is indeed a great honor for Republic Bank uh, once again to be part of this two-day networking, educational, and technology conference. Thank you for joining us and for being here virtually. At the 2019 edition of this, I spoke of a Trinidad and Tobago in the year 2030, positively disrupted by technology and riding a wave of digital transformation success. I come to you now in 2021 in a Trinidad and Tobago, socially and economically disrupted by a virus that has plagued the entire world for the last nearly 18 months. COVID-19 has been a human tragedy and I sympathize with those families here at home in the region and globally who have lost loved ones to the virus. I also empathize with those who have been affected by the virus in other ways. These are certainly not normal times. And like all of you, I can't wait for it to end. But even as we yearn for the end of the pandemic, we should be looking to the lessons learned, the things that will remain part of our lives, the changes we should be making. If we weren't convinced before that digital transformation was the way forward for us, the cycles of lockdowns, the misnomer of social distancing, the transition to work from home and the challenges of carrying out life's routine transactions with reduced human contact should leave no doubt in our mind about its benefits and I dare say even necessity. In its 2021 budget, the government of Trinidad and Tobago extended the remit of the Ministry of Public Administration to include responsibility for digital transformation. In February 2021, the Ministry of Public Administration and Digital Transformation announced the formation of a cabinet appointed Digital Transformation Advisory Committee, which states, with a mandate, sorry, which states it will provide an external review of GOT's proposed ICT investments and provide feedback on the impact of active investment in the quality of life and standard of living of citizens. The committee has established work streams that will look at policy and law, change management, IT infrastructure and services, and community outreach and uptake. These announcements are indeed laudable and we look forward to experiencing the impact of the, community, the committee's work. While a critical step to digital transformation at the national level is government's involvement and more so leadership, other areas of society need to experience their own eureka moments on this matter and drive their own agenda if we are to continue to move the needle and take our rightful place at the digital table. But having bandied about the phrase digital transformation some six times so far in this address, yes, I was counting, I thought that it would be useful to settle on a definition. Salesforce, a global technology company, defines digital transformation as, I quote, the process of using digital technologies to create new or modify existing business processes, culture, and customer experiences to meet changing business and market requirements." Unquote. What I like about this definition is that it can equally apply to businesses and governments, and it touches on some of the key elements that are critical to any attempt at moving an entity up the digital ladder. These elements are change, customer experience, processes, and technology. You will note that I put technology at the end of the list, and while no doubt an all digital transformation is dependent on some element of technology. Too much of a focus on this can detract from the real keys to success. I mentioned change and more explicitly change management at the top of the list, because if this aspect is not properly handled, most transformation efforts will fail or not live up to their full potential. Acknowledging, understanding and addressing the concerns and issues of all affected stakeholders is critical to creating buy-in, wide-scale adoption, and ultimately success. Timely and targeted communication are a critical aspect of successful change management and any transformation effort. 
and feedback loops to allow for the understanding of the impact on constituent parties and adjustments are required, as required, sorry, are also essential components. Equally important is the customer slash user experience. And I use the term customer slash, slash user because not only is it critical to focus on the ultimate customer, but also on the employees that use any systems or processes. These transformation efforts would start by examining, unpacking and repacking the customer user journey stand the greatest chances of creating fundamental shifts in their industries, markets, or societies. Ultimately, a positive impact on the customer experience is the key measure of any transformation efforts success. For instance, HSBC, one of the leading financial institutions in the world with over 38 million global customers, recently implemented a global customer experience framework which maximizes use on a reuse, sorry, on a global scale while allowing local elements where necessary. This has led to a consistent user and customer experience across multiple markets and sales and service channels, resulting in improved revenue. In order to reimagine processes, business and government processes must operate outside of organizational silos and must be done on an end-to-end -end basis using multiple avenues to find and connect to customer needs. Consider this, retail customers in Australia and New Zealand expect a first-class experience, a world-class experience, and the Kmart Group has been delivering a better customer experience through future-ready employees and infrastructure using cloud technology. By partnering with Amazon Web Services to build out its capability in several areas, including data and analytics. This has led to great successes, including being able to live stream point of sale data and the use of machine learning to predict customer buying habits for improved demand forecasting. With so many options to improving processes, you should know that there's also a fine art of determining when incremental process improvement is sufficient and when radical process reengineering is necessary. A future-based mindset is critical to deriving long-term benefit to these changes. As efforts like these ripple through our government and businesses, collectively they will enhance national productivity and economic competitiveness. However, we must also be aware of the various inequities that exist in our societies and ensure that these changes are inclusive and benefit as broad a cross-section of society as possible. The cabinet appointed Digital Transformation Advisory Committee through its subcommittee work stream on communities outreach and uptake has recognized this need and we certainly look forward to the deliberations in that regard. In September 2020, Republic Financial Holdings Limited signed on to the United Nations Principle of Responsible Banking, committing to this global initiative in support of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. One of the areas that we specifically adopted in Trinidad and Tobago is goal number nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. The UN Sustainable Development Goal document states, and I quote, inclusive and sustained industrialization together with innovation and infrastructure can unleash dynamic and competitive economic forces that generate employment and income. They play a key role in introducing and promoting new technologies, facilitating international trade and enabling the efficient use of resources." Unquote. Our actions at Republic Bank in support of this goal will see us launch programs and products that will support and drive innovation, promote sustainable industrialization and help build a resilient infrastructure. To this end, we have launched several sustainable and economically friendly products and services, including NCash, a, a, a digital wallet in the form of an app on your telephone. Our ePay and Figaro solutions allow customers to accept payments online for goods and services. And by partnering with B-Mobile and Digicel, we have been able to facilitate free data access for all our customers using Republic Bank's internet banking, NCash, and mobile banking making online banking cheaper, easier, and more convenient. 
In terms of sustainable industrialization and resilient infrastructure, the RFHL group has also recently pledged to lend and invest 200, and 200 million US dollars by the year 2025 to activities which include the lending and investment for loans that enable of electric and hybrid cars, loans that are aligned to the promotion of clean fuels, renewable energy and technology, and that contribute to an improvement in energy efficiency and construction loans that deploy climate resilient technologies. In most speeches about digital transformation, we have the typical references to Estonia and Singapore as digital transformation poster boys. And this is good cheerleading. But if we pass these references around like baby photos at a family gathering and do nothing about our own situation, what's the use? I believe that the COVID-19 pandemic can and should serve as a catalyst providing the impetus we need to stop procrastinating and to push ourselves to be proactive and creative in this regard. Its impact can already be seen in aspects of how the government, industries, and small businesses have developed new ways to operate and serve the country. But this is just the tip of the iceberg and there's much more to be done. In his opening remarks, Niraj spoke about many of the, the sort of infrastructural stuff that needs to be done. We're moving, but we are moving too slowly and we need to, to, to really ramp up our speed on this. As Senator, the Honorable Anna West, Minister of Public Administration and Digital Transformation stated in her keynote address at the Trinidad and Tobago Internet Governance Forum in January, 2021, and I quote, government has placed the development of digital Trinidad and Tobago at the forefront of its development agenda and stated that a fully digital Trinidad and Tobago is central to the growth and diversification of our economy, unquote. This is indeed a lofty ambition and bold words, but it's really up to all of us to make it happen. I thank you. <laughs>